Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 Madea. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you'll see our visuals. But don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications, because I know you don't want to miss any of these episodes that's coming your way. Because each and every one of them is so fire Y'all don't want to miss this But let me see Everybody y'all see us on the streets and be like Man I love what y'all doing keep it up How can we support a brand should we buy merch What should we do let me tell you what you should do On the each and every video That we have including this one In the, des in the description section there is a link That says join our membership That's what you need to do is join our membership Click that link follow the instructions And man you will see all the Exclusive content you want to see Before anybody else Thank you in advance. Man, hey, man, listen, man. We got a special guest in there today. This guy here don't need no introduction. Uh, he rips the wave when he get it. When he decides to do it, he rips the wave. This guy right here, he hit a little different, man. They call me Mr. Yeah. Hit that O. Hit that O is in the building. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening in? Man, what's going on, man? I mean, you, you, man, you, you one of these historians in the city. When a nigga try to prove something, he say, man, you ought to just ask Mr. Hit that. He'll tell you what happened, man, because you know what I'm saying? He know what I'm went down. Show, man. I'm, I'm glad to be able to, to be around the culture for so long. You know what I'm saying? People got a fact check through me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, so that's it. Clear, that's, that's it. Clear. I want to, I want to go back to uh, the. Say cheese interview. The oh, first yeah. one you did when you was getting your hair cut. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the grove, right? Yeah, oh. in the grove. And and I wanna ask you like from that interview uh -huh. to when you were sitting there again with Sean yeah. with Sean at that whole uh uh meeting that you had. I don't I don't the know forum. what that was. The I don't the even forum. I don't even know yeah. what that was. The sit down. The sit down. But they was over there yeah. and uh uh how how was that that Sean compared to the Sean that you first met way back then? More poised. More poise. Sean's more poise. Like his, his elevation and his work ethic. You can see the way he conducted himself, the way he handled himself, the way he walked in the room. And even though Sean was nervous, he was like, shit, I didn't know if y'all niggas gonna set me up. God damn me, he was I a little nervous. That. So, you know what I'm saying? Just to just to see the way he, he carried himself, his mannerisms. You can tell when people are financially in a in a better state of mind. What about you? Yeah. Like far as that that young you compared to that the older you, the old, older, mature yeah. you. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning to <coughs> not voice my opinion so much. I can't tell in a, in a public. Why in, in a in a, pub, in a private setting? Okay, because some people don't want to hear the truth. The truth is the truth is the most unpopular answer that people want to hear. People want to be lied to. People want their <coughs> ego pushed. People want to feel good. And the truth sometimes don't make a motherfucker. You don't think that people respect you more, although they might hate but the, the truth? But the catch is, respect although don't pay bills. Yeah. Respect don't pay bills. Yeah. I just seen uh, Ruby Rose just post something. I don't know if she was trolling or not, but she said, God damn it, I got money. Y'all got morals. Which one you want? Millions of morals. I seen that. You know what I'm saying? So Shoot, I want morals because at the end of the day, I got one guy to answer to. Money what, don't worth everything. I think she but, said she wanted but what's, million. What's that, what state of mind you in right now, Miss Jamaica? 20 years, happily married, financially well off, boss status. You know what I'm saying? So now your 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 character means more. Mm -hmm. But when you're younger, you chasing a bag. Right. So now when you speaking in that in regards and you catering to these women's and males, they chase money so much that they lose their morals and then when they get older, now they backtracking, trying to fix all the wrong that they done did. So you're telling me as a young, uh, so you're saying as a young individual, yep. you need to um, put aside certain things as in like your character, your morals, all no, of that to, to change the bag? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's the narrative that the world has given us, mm -hmm. like the OnlyFans, the, the dancing. I'm gonna be, I've am been around it, you know what I'm saying? So me transitioning is because, shit, I got morals. I, I mean, I always had morals, but now I'm looking at it like, shit, I'm just growing into my adulthood. So now certain shit I just can't do because my character won't allow me to do it. My character won't let me be lame and lie to right. you. My character won't let me not tell you the truth. But it affects my financial dividends because some niggas just want to get lied to. Yeah. 
And that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I want I rather fuck with the niggas that got there me that stand on their own principles and morals too. Yeah. Because now we can we can we can we can have an understanding. Because I've seen situations where they say because an industry the industry is like that, but yeah. you have people out here who are looking for the diamond in the rough like you who stand upon yeah. principles that hard. you have to go through all the crap you have to go through first yeah. before you get that. Sometimes you might be like, man, when is it going to come? Yeah. Like, I ain't going to lie, though, but, but the truth, the truth calls the culture to have some great artists like like Mo3. Exactly. Like, I remember, I remember me and Mo, you know what I'm saying, used to get into it hard as hell on that first album we did on the first project that I got to host and actually be a part of and sit with him while he made every song. We was arguing for days about the music. Like, hey, bro, this ain't hard enough. I seen it push that envelope to now we go back and listen to that music and it's timeless. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I remember doing my first podcast with Square Biz, R.P. Dip, and got dang on me, and Seven the Great came in. I was like, bro, you gotta go harder. That ain't hard enough. And it pushed him to another level of his talent. But the catch is, if we don't have people in the culture that's for the culture, by the culture, grown in the culture so we have a different love for this to push our envelope to the next level how can we grow as a culture i agree i, I agree um you go going back to mo three being in them studios and, and 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 doing the things that you were doing with him at that time what were some of, some of the songs that that you guys created man oh my god all right i i, I still remember him getting on the boosie the uh the, the g shit. And he was like, uh, when he did the whole look, the little, you gotta probably pull it up. Where he just did, he went in there and freestyle. And I was like, bro, that shit good and all, but you gotta come harder, fool. Everybody know you can rap about guns. Everybody know you was a gangster. Everybody know all this shit. But nigga, let's start talking about your mama issues, nigga. Let's talk about how your upbringing, how we're hard, nigga. Because everybody talk about being bald and jewelry, clothes, money, and all that lame ass shit. But when you really get it, the only thing that influenced your brain waves now is what you came from. So were you, uh, you and Rain was kind of homing in on that? Cause Rain wanted to that, say he he also, you right, know. Now Rain was definitely told him to change, of, you know, change yeah, that so style said, up. Because at the end of the day, it's like this. Was you and him working together to do that, Rain, to push that actually, narrative? When Rain got out of jail, he called me up like, hey bro, I got all this. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right bro, like, cause I heard this shit all the time. So when he actually went in the studio, I was like, damn, this nigga really got one. I was like, damn, that nigga broke in the bitch, right? How the fuck we gonna do it? He was like, bro, it's so much pain in his music. He just goes so hard. Got to listening to it, and it was like, yeah, you heard it. When he started talking about his mama, the two pieces of chicken, all that type of shit, like. It clicked. It clicked. Because you gotta think about it now. Think about this, think about this E. When you in, when you in a room, right, and it's a whole bunch of bosses, real bosses. The only thing that can shift this room if you talk about the struggle because the bosses know we came from this. Yeah. When you're in a room for the motherfucking newcomers that's got new money, the only thing that can shift their room is talk about who got the most money. Yeah, yeah. So it's two elements of life. So now I'm transitioning from being in a room with new money to being around niggas that really got money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's like you look, you're looking at it like it's, it's, it's two levels of it. You gotta always remember this young youthful fun but now it's like, hey, bro, we got to transition and we got to keep this shit flowing. Because the catch is everybody can get money. Because it's like money money's like a house. You open the front door, the motherfucker coming in. A lot of motherfuckers don't keep it because they got their garage door open. So the motherfucker going out bigger than what it came in. So once you learn how to close that garage and keep that shit in, the only people that like the nice clothes and nice jewelry is broke motherfuckers. That's true. That's the line. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Like yeah. the only people that really like that shit is broke motherfuckers. The only shit that motivate is broke motherfuckers. But in the entertainment industry, don't you still have an image? You're Even entertaining the, the broke motherfuckers. Let's be real. Yeah. You entertain the kids because you gotta you gotta have that image. You have and, to have that, that look. And that's cool. But the catch is, once you get the image, but E, you probably one of the richest niggas I probably know, my nigga. Since I've been a kid, I don't see you walking around with Gotti jewelry. No, Back in the day, you used to go. When I was a kid, it. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you were starting to bring, you were starting to stole. So it was like, for me, I'm looking at Eli, yeah, that's big homie. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go fuck with Big Homie. Let me go learn from Big Homie. Mm-hmm. That's how our relationship started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Involuntarily, yeah, whether yeah. whether I knew it at the time or whether you knew but it. At that's the, time. the same thing. Like the same thing. I, I know already. You're a walking example. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I always talk about uh, Taylor and you know playing playing pro ball. Like yeah. He came telling me the same thing. You're a walking example. Our relationship is an, a walking example exactly. of how you're supposed to bring, present yourself. We're not trying to gear it no way. We're exactly. trying to be an example it's, to the people that God, you know, yeah, that God's in our life. Because the story, the storyline, and, and the way you going you gonna push your message out. You're not gonna know who is gonna hit. So, no, like see, he like let's be transparent. I I didn't tired to call you about my own relationship advice because sure. I know. I done seen how you are a walking example as a husband. Yeah. Fuck a man, fuck a baller, fuck a boss. It's like, man, I only can talk to people. Like, a lot of people that have relationships, they talk to their homegirls. They talk to their homeboys. Bro, they talk to their parents. Parents probably don't got a good, healthy relationship. Their homeboys, homegirls don't got a good relationship. So how the fuck you going to get the right knowledge from somebody who hasn't done it? Correct, correct. Yeah, I remember, like I said, when we did talk about it, your girl was like, you talked about him about everything. But I, I don't even think, I didn't even tell you no, about that. No, he just told me about it earlier. <laughs> and so it's like, it's yeah, like I, what, just, I, I didn't tell catches, nobody because I, it was just something me and him was and, talking and about. The catches, I tell people all the time, it's like, you got to get people that, that you want to be like. So if I know Ian, 20 years happily in married, even if y'all going through y'all trials, the visual from my perspective, hey man, wait, what, let me get some advice. I don't want to go too deep in y'all shit. Y'all ain't got to go too deep in my shit. But let me get some advice. Yeah. Because I can't get advice from somebody who has never been through it. Exactly. Or I don't want advice from somebody no, who done been through a divorce unless I want to know what not to do. Yeah, correct. <laughs> you know correct. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you can learn like that too. You yeah. can learn like but that. But the catch is, is like, it's, it's just life. It's just growth. Yeah. Like, and you got to understand, like, every like you just said, when you seen this interview to this interview, to this, you got to see the growth. Yeah. If you don't see no growth, then what are you doing? Because the catch is, niggas be moving hard. The motherfucker, they got motion. And you in a hamster wheel, fam. For sure, for sure. You're literally going in the same place. You just don't realize because you haven't stopped to progress and be like, oh, boom, 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 boom. I seen a lady on Mother's Day, right? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my mama, man. It's shout Mother's out Day. to the mom, Shout out man. to my mom. Shout out to my old lady. She'll be with Mr. Mother. Maker, man. You know shout saying? out. You know what I'm saying? So I seen a lady was like, we always telling people Happy Mother's Day. And they ain't even no real mothers. And I was like, damn, see, it's a hating ass post. But I kept watching it. And she was like, you should be able to post your progressions of what you done did with your child to show the motherly growth. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. Because that's the definition of a mother. Like, you just saying you a mother because it came out of your your, your ovaries and all that. Sometimes that ain't enough. Because they say the same shit about us on oh, For sure, for sure. They don't hold the mothers account. Everybody's sweet and nice to the mamas. Yeah. I'm talking about even the mamas that done raised some crazy motherfuckers. We, it's love. But when it comes to them fathers, because fathers they around the counter, we don't get the same gift. We don't get the same knowledge. We don't get the same songs. I, I literally played, at K105, I played at least 25 mother mm-hmm. songs, yeah. anthems. Yeah. I didn't even know it was 25. I was just playing them. It was song after song. Like, I could, and you are so crazy, you probably can't name 25 mother songs. No, I can't. But I can name one. Dear Mama, mama. she that's the hardest <laughs> one. You know what I'm that's saying? That's the thing I got for you. You got on Boys mama, to Men. Mama, that, yeah, 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 it's a couple. My, my, one of my favorite ones is uh, Letter to the Mama by Mo3. Mm-hmm. You, got, all, you got you got R. Kelly too. He did one. Uh, Sadie. Come that's on, a hard that's one. what I made in my post. That's mm-hmm. a hard one. You know what I'm saying? Woke early one Sunday that's a hard morning. One. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. if your mama raised that, that that's touching. Yeah. Oh, and my favorite too, Chain. Mama didn't raise no hope. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. So it, it's so many songs, yeah. but as far as it's like, damn, we. We ain't got nothing to do. We got about one. You, you got some. You just got to yeah, look for yeah. it. Yeah, Luther Vandross uh, danced with my father. Come on, yeah. he did. And the catch is. They don't appreciate us till we gone. Yeah. They yeah. don't. Cause we too busy. And that's a good example of a song that, that he did put that out after his father passed. Yeah, bro. They don't appreciate us till we gone. They can't. I seen Charleston White say, hey man, you you can't you can't understand the value of a man until he's gone to actually sit there and count it. Once you he, he, you alive, you gotta still pay bills. For sure. You still gotta go be a provider. For you sure. still gotta do X, Y, and Z. So I can't count and appreciate you. The way I'm supposed to appreciate you is with any man. Wow. No, but bars. I see, but bars. I see, Wait a no. Minute. Bars. Okay, but <laughs> I see, I see the appreciation because I know as a black man how hard it is. You know, I'm not a man, but I can see it. That's a 1% of thought process. 
I'm speaking on a global aspect. Wow. Man, that's a mm-hmm. sad thing, but you know. I mean, you appreciate him because you, you're a loving wife. You understand he's a loving father. But even at the end of the day, sometimes you you might not know it. You, you probably, in the midst of, where well, you probably be different. I'm not going to speak on you, but in general, women move so fast and the wants don't stop. The bills don't stop. So it's constant, constant work and needs that you need to require from a man to be a provider. I think a lot of it stems from also men don't like to open up and tell us women. We can't. Because, yes, we can't. because y'all say that us women we think can't. that y'all are soft when you do that. We but can't. no, why can't you? Jamaica, stop it. We can't. Why can't you? Because once we show, once we show you our vulnerable side, that is a weakness that you can use against it's us. It's not a vulnerable side. Yes, I'm is. talking about, no, listen listen to me. I'm talking about, like, example, he's came home before and then, like, I can, I can say something to him and he'll snap. And I know it's not me. I know it's something else. It could be but, his day. It could be something, whatever fine. he's going through, whatever. And I'm like. And we can't tell you that. But you're going to snap at us and, you know, we gonna, we gonna, it's going to be right. an argument. It's, it's but your, all it's you your have job to do, as a mother, as a wife. To understand that he's going through something and be his peace. But it's communication as well. I don't want we it. We can't read your mind. When I say communication, hold on. When I say communication, you don't have to break down and tell us everything. You can say, baby, it's not you. I'm just having a bad day. It's not. That's all you need to say. That's it's, all you need to say. Fair because why is not why is that not fair? It's not fair because what if I'm having a bad month? Okay. What if, what if I'm having a bad six months? But you know how At women what are? At point that you're going to be able to, to continue to be the peace? Let me tell you how women are. Through frustration. Women are naturally nurturers. Everybody know that, right? Yep. To our kids and also to our man. When I say that, meaning like when you when we see you hurting, whether you're having a bad day or whatever, we want to help fix it. I know that sometimes we can't fix it. You have to go through what you have to go through. Yep. But how can I ease this? Do I need to take you to the bedroom and take it off your mind for a second or do I need to what do I, cook your breakfast dinner whatever what do I need to do rub your feet what do I need to do to make it better that's that's cool and all but in the it's cool when we're having a conversation because yeah. the mics are on but it will that be your natural thought in the midst of he didn't pissed you off because he snapped at you would your will your brain go back into hey let me be the fixer and not respond because a lot of people communicate me included if we're in an argument or we're in a battle or we're in a debate, or whatever vocabulary word you want to use, you're responding to with ego, because at the end of the day, you gotta be put, you gotta be the priority. So d- can you control your priority in the midst of your frustration? In the because beginning, not, they don't. In the beginning, they don't. So because it took time for me to realize that yeah. and realize, sit down and like, okay, I know I didn't do nothing wrong. So okay, what is this really but, about? But I got a question though. You see how the first thing you responded with, you put yourself in the situation first mm-hmm. versus simply saying I hey, was wrong mm-hmm. I got the catch is the only way you can make a great relationship great is if you put yourself last but I'm not going to ask him what's wrong because again y'all don't ever open up and tell us what's wrong but the catch is asking what's wrong could be a, it's so many different vocabulary phrases that you could say mm-hmm. hey, baby, they pissed you off at the job again or it's it's other ways to go around it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just the catch is you got to find it for whatever your person desires. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I always tell my old lady, it's checks and balances. I can't worry about me and you can't worry about you. If you always worried about me and I'm always worried about you, we can't go wrong. Right. But once we start worrying about ourselves, then shit, it's not going to work mm-hmm. because now we're going to start becoming selfish. But if I'm always catering to you and you always catering to me, our glass is going to keep pouring to each other. Exactly. So we can't be unbalanced. Mm-hmm. But the catch is, it's hard doing that shit because you got days when you're going through shit that you don't want to communicate with it because at the end of the day, everybody that's in a relationship, they want to keep certain shit to themselves because the catch is, once you let that, that cat out the bag, it might be you, it, now you become vulnerable. Mm-hmm. A lot of women don't want to be vulnerable, not the young women. A lot of men don't want to be vulnerable. Because the catch is, you got social media, got so many niggas shooting at you, so you can use this information and belittle me in pub in the public eye later on. So it's kind of hard to build shit now. It's but just like how you say, it just depends on how you say it. I'm not saying be vulnerable and tell her everything. It don't even matter. It's just it's it's just it's fucked up. Because the catch is, the worst thing you could do right now is to, to go broke in a relationship, and you tell your old lady, and she got seven rich niggas. DM and 
She might turn down 10 weeks of it. Stay broke, my nigga. See how she going to fight through it. Is she going to fight through it? Wow. The catch depends is, on, it depends on the woman. Is, is, is the catch, and then don't let her be no bad bitch. Know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's the hardest thing. That's why a lot of niggas go, they go broke behind a woman. They don't go broke behind a nigga. They go broke behind a woman. I never, I never let a woman be the, I guess, measuring stick to my success because I always thought that was small. But the catch is, look how you was raised. Eat. You understand what I'm saying? I was, a, I was a hustler. So at the end of the day, I couldn't, her money, what she got could never equate to what I'm thinking. But look how you was raised, eat. Yeah. Society and the way the culture is now, you got more young niggas that want stripes over paper. Yeah. Different time, too, you know. It's, a, it's a different era, bro. We came yeah. up in an era where if it was a problem, we fight. But the catch is, we can't fight now because if you get fought, it's recorded. Now your embarrassment goes to the public So they got guy. them sticks. It's only 20 niggas in the hood. And they, out of these 20 niggas, half of them go to different schools or different age brackets. So if they see the fight and you lose, they gonna y'all going to dap up and probably be cool and go hoop after. And ain't going to be no smoke. But now, if you fight now, it's recorded. So after this fight, you gonna gotta go to the school. It's a thousand people at this school. And everybody done seen this fight. Now everybody see, so now everybody saying, ooh, that get back a motherfucker. Where your get back at? You ain't get no get back? Oh, you's a hoe. Wow. I wanna ask got you. Got peer pressure. I got it. Yeah. yeah. No, he right. He exactly right. I got it. You ain't get no get back, you a hoe. You a hoe. I had a question um about what we were go talking ahead. about before you get into something else. You were talking about that hamster wheel before. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you do this with your girl or you do this on with yourself. You know, you're talking about checks and balances. How many times do we stop and say, like, every week, every two weeks and say, okay, where were we at last week? What did we do? And how that's we going to That's some good shit. You understand what I mean? No, and and, and even in and your work life, you gotta everything. You got to do that in everything now. How and many people do that? Do you do that? I, I don't, but I, I'm, I'm starting the thought process of doing that. Like, because it's different now because, see, the goal for me when I was younger, like, dog, you probably got to buy your house, pay your cars off, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? So, like, me buying a house, I'm not knowing all the extra shit that come with it. Like, if they told me, shit, my mortgage is going to be $3,000, cool. They not, did nobody tell me that that motherfucker go up every year? Mm -hmm. Did nobody tell me about HOA? Did nobody tell me about taxes? Did nobody tell me they're going to find me $100 if I don't cut my grass? Mm -hmm. Did nobody tell me all these expenses? Like, did nobody tell me this? So the catch is, we're in a society where a majority of the people are nine times out of ten going to do better than their parents. So who the fuck are teach, who is teaching us financial literacy and understanding? Because it's not in the schools. And the catch is... I hate to say it, us as a culture don't want to see the next person doing better than them. So they're not divulging the information. So to we help not them. we not transform we not transcending the information to the next generation. You probably got a few OGs that you know, and I and I can't blame the OGs because it's like man, that nigga ain't got his head on straight. I ain't gonna waste my time with him. But we're in a generation where social media, where YouTube and everything, you can go yeah, research it yourself. That shit sound wonderful, but if you don't know what to press in the search bar. Like, I hate when people say that. No, not not saying you, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's like, we don't even know where to start. Because the catch is, on social media, on Instagram, they say the shit make it so easy. Hey, man, go get you a, a, a goddamn me LLC. Do this, do this. And you file. They don't tell you to break down where, hey, bro, it's going to take you 48, 48 months for the bank to really even take you serious. Hey, bro, you got to put in about five to $10,000 every month for 48 months for the bank to take you serious. They don't tell you that shit. It sounds good and it's clickbait, the information that they they they, they digesting in us. However, they not breaking it down. But like you said, who's to know that? The search bar is empty. So until somebody put that shit in our head, we don't fucking know how to even find it. And then when it's time to find it, it's too late. Now it's the new move. It's the new hustle because this shit got burnt out. Wow. Let me ask you about your clothing line. Are you still pushing it? I'm trying to get back on it. But see, that, in my eyes, that was my hamster wheel. Wow. And, and you didn't think because, it was necessary to bring it to this phase of a walk in your life? I, all right. First off, LLC, I didn't know about the business. I was spending my own money. I didn't know you were supposed to spend your own money. Who told you that? She, I learned it. 
I don't know about that. I'm, I'm only reason I say this is because, all right, it's it's just two. It's more than one way to skin I'm, a cat. And it, that's cool. But for me, on my cat, the way I skinned this cat, I had shit. I was spending more money making new clothes, making new merch, making new merch, and I was standing in an apartment. So you wasn't seeing, uh, you wasn't seeing, yeah, it. you wasn't seeing ROI. It, from it, it was, it was just, it was just, it was just a, because if if when you do clothes, this shit expensive. Mm -hmm. And then when you when you got a demand for it, it's even more expensive. And then when you drop the ball or you can't pull up on a motherfucker when they want the clothes, she you, you missed the same. moment. Mm -hmm. And the catch is, shit, I'm selling clothes, I'm DJing, I'm on the radio. And then shit, fifty percent of my life, I cater to my kids. So when I'm with my kids, all shit, all I'm systems paused. stop. So what what would the what would the extra financial be, be? Where would it be beneficial for you? How would you structureize if you had had the finances? That was you the, know that I, where I mean, you could have had a, a whole say if I gave you a million dollars and you could go and do something. I could have hired a team. A, 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 say the name of it, the name of your brand, Hidalgo. Hidalgo. What would you do with that million? I have a team. I build a team, and that, that was my biggest flaw. I didn't have a team. I did everything by myself, and my old lady helped me, all my kids. And they was too young to market. She was busy. We was still living life. We was just now learning each other. We was, we was new in a relationship. So that shit wasn't a priority to me. I didn't know it was going to be that big. I think I think you're just in a phase of it. I think you don't. No, it's, I, you know, no it's, it, I'm cranking it back up. There though. you go. You have because, to. Because, see, the catch is I got, my, I got all my ducks in a row financially in a business point. And like building up the team point, building up the the manufacturers and all that, like that's the hard part. But the catch is, it's a lot of motherfuckers that do the hard part first, and then they don't got no brand. So you build it's like your brand first. They, I didn't know. I didn't. Who would have thought this shit would have did what it did? Who knows? Like you don't know. It's like making music. You made a song and it went big, boom, and now you just a one hit wonder because now it's like you. You didn't expect this shit to do this. I mean, your your idea goal was for it to do it. But when it actually happens, that's kind of like the scariest thing because it's like, now where I go from here? You keep well, chasing it I again. Got a, I got a guy I'm going to plug in with. I hadn't talked to him in a minute. The one we did met in L.A. Yeah. I think it would be a good source for you. But you got to think. And you have to go to meetings I, I and stuff like that. By, man, when I was in L.A., who yeah. I ran into? Yeah. When I first started, you remember? Yeah. yeah. You seen me. Like, Magic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing. Know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. Shout out my boy Charles from Big T who like plugged me in like yep. and low. Like they was the ones that was like, hey bro, you need to come here and you see this. Okay, boom. It worked. But How there's, did a, there's that another feel? there's another sector of that too though. Is that in the kitchens? Now I'm I wouldn't have known if we wouldn't have spoken up right now. Mm -hmm. But when you went to Magic Show, what did you get from it? I got that this shit can happen. And you don't have to have much. Like you don't have to have much. Like I used to, I used to think, bro, you needed like a hundred thousand dollars. You need, you don't need it. And I and I seen other brands that that are good brands surpass me because they kept working. But the catch is, my my only problem that I have, my gift and my curse is, I'm a father first, and that it sucks with my business end of it, because I turn down some shit without thinking twice, and be like, damn, I should have did that shit. But shit, I, I got to go to my little nigga field trip. So I got to spend time with my son. Like, which is understandable. So, but at the same time, it's I gotta learn how to balance it out in a better way where it can it can work both ways. Oh, let me get back. But let me why are you so um it's a great quality, but why are your boys your everything? Is it that you was your father there like that yeah, my for father, you? It's like it's, it's loud. It's like it's, I want to continue the trend of. So he my, was like that for I you. I like a motherfucker. So like, he, like that's nah, what you like, saw. I had a real do. father. So it's like it, it'll be it'll 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 be little me and the things he did for me to not give more to my kids because the goal is to be better. Like you know how people be like, I want to be like just like you know you want to be better than me. I'm I'm raising you to be better than me. So my obligation to my kids is to be better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because if this shit ends today, like I'm no more, I'm no more hit that. It's, it's, it's over. The only people that's gonna be there for me is my core family, my kids, and my old lady. Niggas lose sight of that. 
they get lost in this this world. This world not real. Wow. If your if your bills was due, eat nine times out of ten. 97% of everybody you to communicate with and built a great relationship with, you're not going to call them. Not only am I going to call them, I don't think a lot of them would even give me anything anyway because they expect me to have it. And at the end of the day, they'd never seen me without it. So I, re I learned that when I had to do, you know, do my little bid, to be honest with you. Everybody going to fall back. thing I can say, man, is, is that you, know, you got to know that, you know, Everybody, like even Rain said about his mama, which was so deep when he said that on the show yeah. about, you know, that's who he know going to be there. He absolutely 100% correct. Nobody will never love you like your mama. You. You know, uh, uh, as, as, as far as for me and for what I've experienced, mama, your wife, the core, like you said, yeah, you they, they, they there. If you die, they're going to get you buried off. <laughs> I got a question. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I totally agree with that. I heard that. You know what I'm saying? I come in on the wood like that. Was, Did you come in on that? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, <laughs> know what I'm saying? That, 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 Ryan I like it's going viral right, right now. Ryan like Charleston White to a certain extent. He say a whole lot of bullshit, <laughs> and then he'll mix some real nigga shit in there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He, he, so that was one of his real nigga moments. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, but it's like, at what point as a man, you know what I'm saying, Going like when do you transition to, to, to put your faith in? And your woman. I think that's two different type of situations. That's two different yeah. type of love. Love, there's four different loves. There's a agape love, there's a filial love, there's a sturgio love, and there's an eros love. Break it down. All of those are different. Break it down. Agape love is a godly love. Godly, yeah. God loves you unconditionally. For sure. A filial love is like between two brothers, uh, a brother and a, 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 a sibling. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, Eros love is romantic, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's Sturgio. One of them is like the mother and the, 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 the child. child love is different. So you're not going to put those in the same category. Okay. And I think a lot of times people don't understand how to strategize and know how to understand those types of loves and yeah. decipher them. And they get and them all, a lot all of people, twisted up. A lot of people get jealous of certain levels. Exactly. Love. And that's the, the that's where you have to try to educate the one who you're loving yeah. so they can understand that's because they don't of, know. A lot of people be like, well, what religion you is? Because we can't love two different people because... Unequally yoked is what they call it. Yeah, yeah they, that's yoked. what they talk about. So it's like, it's, I mean, it's... But then you got to understand, I, I look at it different. I think everybody's always evolving. So you don't know where you end up. I, maybe I look at it different because my mom and dad married. Yeah. So I can't put my love for my mom on that level. I got to get married and find my own because I literally watch how their bond is. Mm -hmm. The so, foundation. But the catch is, if you haven't seen your mom have a bond with another man, you gonna always be that. But again, you're to talking about, it, but again, you're talking about your mother. I could be wrong though. You're talking about your mother and your father's love yeah. versus the love that a mother have for a, a child. child. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so but I mean, that, I, and like I say again, a lot of times it, people it, get it, it twisted, twisted up and they don't understand how to decipher those loves. It's like the love that you have for your kids. Yeah, different type of compared love. to the love that you have for your your spouse, your, your spouse, girl, or your, your girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah, two you different know what type I mean? of love. It's two different kind of. So love. it's like, I see one, one thing. I get what he's saying because just knowing how 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 coach is, I see more niggas. Goddamn me, they 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 break their back for a new bitch or a pretty face. Yeah, or something curvy. They will break their back, and he be like, "Damn, bro, your mama full help out on the bill or two, my nigga." Like, I know me, like, my mom, I done bought my mom a Gucci purses, all type of nice shit that I assume that is nice. You know what my mama tell me? What? Babe, I just want four new tires on my car. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, but the thing you got to understand also. <laughs> it's a different level. It's a different level. There's a thin level. line between level. having that love. That love can also turn to idolization, which God don't even like. You got them right. So you got to know how to keep that line yeah. there as well. So there's just so many different ways. That's why you got to have a structure. I believe spiritual. I hear y'all talking, but my thing is the foundation of God for me. For sure. That's for what sure. keep me going. And I don't need no man to get to God. So I have to train my family up and I have to my children up and, and understand the foundation of where I'm going with God. And that's the whole game for me. So I don't do no outside you know what, source you know what's or none so crazy? of that, right? You know what's so crazy? Like, what's that? I, I ain't been to church in a while. You know what I'm saying? I raised up in a church. I went to church with my mom on Sunday. So we went to two churches. Went to church with her church, and then my brother preached, so we wound up going to his church. And I was just listening to the message. And what's so crazy is just 
it be crazy how when you sit down and hear the message and he be like, damn, why the hell it? Why, like, it's like he picking at me. Like, like why he, <laughs> he why talking he, to you? Why he talking to me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, that 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 opened my up on on getting my foundation, like, you know what I'm saying? Uprooting my foundation and, and starting to make a new, a new, a new fresh dirt pile. Because at the end of the day, that that's that's major. Ain't you know what, that. you know what I think thing about too? too? Yeah. Like when Respect. Rain like when Rain was talking, you know how Rain was talking and saying that, well, he get a big house so he could have his mama there because you never know as she get older, if she fall, I need to know that she fell, she should be so. in the house. But then in the Bible it talks about when you find Someone, you know, you now leave your mom and dad and go and create your and, own. And that's what I was saying. Yeah, but then it turns around and also says if you got a woman that's a widow woman, if she's three score and ten, she's a widow indeed. And you basically have to then start to take care of her. Mm -hmm. The elders and everybody that's believers in God. That's true so too, though. You, there are stages. Again, everything's evolution. You got to be studying. That's why the word says study to show that's approved. Bottom line, though. We done went there. Now, nah, yeah, for sure. Bottom line, though. What he what he said was the bigger picture is you you want to look out for the people who looked out for you when you wasn't shit. Pretty much, mm -hmm. like that's the, that's the most that's pretty much what that's it the is. Most uncut raw way you can say it. Exactly. Because we 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 always gift the people who didn't experience the woes with us with the blessings. That's it. And the catch is is is, is it fair? No, but shit, life ain't fair. Favor not fair. It was not fair. I got another question. Cause you know how you said earlier, you said, you know, Rain, he he says some real stuff, but he says some BS stuff. Yeah. I need for you to tell me if this statement that he said is real or BS. He said a lot of men in um, Dallas, Fort Worth, who rappers, music, entertainment, they don't, there's no millionaires out here <laughs> from that. It's not. It's not a lot. Not a lot or not any? You no, know, it's not a lot. It's a few. So there is a few. Yeah, like sure. who? Uh, Emmy, uh, Yellow. Uh, I think uh, Yellow. I, yeah, Do y'all not count like the Post Malones big, and all that? Big, big X. I think he was talking about the, Just entertain the black guys entertainment. Or? Oh, Post Malone. I don't. I don't you know, know if he see. was talking about him or you not. See what I mean, I'm you got, you got, got, you got, you got, you got, got yeah, Vanilla Ice from here, and he's million. Then, though. We got, we got, got some millionaires from here. We got a lot. Still live here? Eric, oh, you just talking about rappers or just entertainers? Just entertainers. We got, we got, we got, we got a few YouTubers that that probably touched the ground. Definitely got a. You got that? You got uh shit. Well, if if we consider Sean Cotton as part of the Dallas culture, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of people that that are well off millionaires. Like, and it is, it's, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have as many as we should have because we don't have the, the structure. And a lot of people be like, yeah, man, we, we don't got it. And we got to embrace the fact that we don't got it. And the catch is, who's going to start it? And come together to create a, a and better... And the catch is, and we in a city where every nigga hates. So how the fuck, if we do start it, how can we continue it? Mm -hmm. I think you got to ignore the haters for sure. Man, you can't. Because you got to be mindful of the haters because you got to, I got to keep my haters closer than my partners. Well, you got a lot more haters than you realize. And that's the catch. And the catch is the haters is so scary because they'll dap you up and be like, E, you that's doing right. your best that's shit. That's right. I seen you on Boss Talk, boy, you, you doing your best they shit. They do that. And then they'll go behind you and be like, man, fuck that nigga, man. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But and the catch is they're going to shake your hand and because the catch is that's the cool thing to do in a public setting. But let a motherfucker start talking bad about you, E. They're going to be like, man, I never liked that whole ass nigga anyway. <laughs> exactly. And then I be. Because and, now and it's the cool minute. thing then, to hate a nigga now. And the, and, the, and the thing is, it don't, you know, what you what you eat don't make me shit. Come on, You know man. what I'm saying? So I don't really be able to even understand that because I'm so in, I'm so locked in yeah. that I don't even know what or care what a nigga exactly. think. Exactly. So I I, and I'm hustling so hard that, and I'm in my good spot. So while you hating, I'm laughing, flying out. You know what I'm saying? Buying cars, it having ain't money. The work. I mean, helping people. Yep, you know. So yep, I yep. think that's the thing. And as you continue to do that, you do. You, you're successful, but the haters will never recognize you for that. Yeah, for sure. When you start focusing on the haters, that's when you're going to fall. Now, see, and, 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 I, and I don't want to say focusing on the haters, but you have to be mindful that they do exist. You have to be mindful you that you always got to check your surroundings in, in the city of Dallas. You know what I'm saying? It's like we get five to ten niggas to pop. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Dallas first started out, we had this, the, the boogie culture. I wanted to talk about that anyway. We had T. Will, Juicy Nine. Who started the boogie coach? Who started? I I, I want to say the club, Sir J. Rock, 
clean cut promotion era. That was the foundation of book because he was the promoter that gave us rap artists an opportunity to have a stage. He gave us that platform. He he was our QC. Okay. Unknowingly, and, and he 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 made a million, well over a million dollars off club promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like so, we had everybody: Paper Chasers, Trelly, Prince, Rick, Goddamn Me, uh, like all the artists. Is like the it's just so mean. I can't think of their names right now. But everybody was cool. We used to do shows together. Everybody was a o fucking k, and some motherfuckers start getting deals. Well, wait a minute. When so Ray when said Mo they wasn't getting no money, he no, said, no, no. He, they, said, he said they no, song he, was bigger than he, they he than said, them. He said that in the beginning. You got to think about it. Me and Ryan used to be in that little raggedy two though Honda, photo Honda, funky ass Honda, and they had stinky feet, socks, <laughs> funky in the beach. I swear to God, <laughs> man, that's crazy. We <laughs> no, <laughs> when they start when we started getting deals, like when we started getting deals. It turned friendship into competition. It turned competition into enemies. It turned enemies into, I don't like this nigga, bro. We was thugging. We used to sleep in Motel 6s, piled up in rooms together, doing shows in Navarro and TJC and motherfucking Mount Pleasant and Mount Vernon, all these little country ass did towns. You get, when, when did, did you get your deal with Mr. Hit That Kane? We got a deal with Mr. Hit That Kane. Okay, you know I'm finna get you. Yeah. Uh, wide Frame was on here, yeah. and Wide Frame said that when you guys, he he showed you love for sure, but he said when you guys got the deal, y'all like when they got it, he didn't even include you in this part. He yeah. say they gave him a call, Trilly and them. They gave him a call. Yeah. They tried to offer him. I want to say was it two hundred or six hundred? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred. I remember vividly. Two hundred. <laughs> and, 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 and he said they knew they had a deal. And he said, "Man, I'm not taking no two hundred dollars for my verse." Check this out. This trail, cheap as fuck. <laughs> trail so cheap as fuck. Shout out to trail, man. Trail cheap as fuck. And he know it. <laughs> and I laugh about what, this. Shit. What the hell happened? And what's so crazy? Like me and me and trail did not see eye to eye for the longest. I never spoke negative on him. I never. I just just. Didn't deal with them. I don't deal with nobody I don't fuck with. Like, I ain't gonna talk about you. I don't speak on it. Only reason I'm I even saying his name now is because I seen him at one of the little uh, DJ meetings or whatever, the vertical okay. meeting. You know what I'm saying? We we got to actually just talk. Talk. You know? Reminds you, we ain't talked since like 2011. Y'all ain't talked in all them years? Yeah, I don't, I don't got nothing to, like, because it was a situation that happened where. Well, you didn't feel good about what had happened. Or nah, you didn't they, need, or they, what? They, I, I, I can talk about I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about it in a second, but we talked about it. And I still remember vividly, Wide Frame only won two hundred dollars for that verse. He didn't know what it was gonna do. Trail, was that at first? This was when it first started. Okay, I get it. Trail stupid ass didn't pay him, and he had the money to pay him. He wouldn't pay him. He didn't pay him. We thought he paid him. Everybody thought he paid him. It was fucking two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Wide Frame was performing in goddamn me holding a wild ass. Artist showcases. You know, he was a cable man. So he wasn't balling back then. There's no disco. And he only front. wanted 200. And some, and they, know what I'm saying? But nigga had a good voice. So, you know what I'm saying? There ain't no. No, he said that. He yeah, said so, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just speaking facts. So, Trail didn't pay him. The song fucking blew up. It, like, I've never seen a song blow up as fast as that song did. And the catch is, everybody at that time, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, everybody was driving to Dallas. Everybody, so when people from Arkansas was coming and knowing his voice, like, damn, bro, you got a song, that shit hot, the club going crazy. He been hearing about this shit for down there over six to ten months. You got to think about TSU performing this whole at halftime, PV. This shit is bigger than life, my nigga. Like, <laughs> nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> this nigga. Did he, and he came on the back end and say, now, I'll give it to you now. I don't, man, that shit crazy. He had to come bro. on the back end and say, I'm going to go on and give it to you now. But that's the way he acted like the I, deal was I, on the I table. Ain't gonna I, I ain't going to lie. I, I, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see Wide Frame having to lie about that. However, Wide Frame didn't even know about our deal. Only reason Wide Frame had like three or four deals he had signed to. So that's his, right. That's so right. So his name pops up. In the in the in the in the in the payment process, so the labels contacted Wireframe. I'm only assuming this yeah. because this this is how business go. When you implement each person's name, and then that's when it started getting to the point where Wireframe was like, "Damn, oh no, 
take that back. Why you even go there? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga wild frame wasn't tripping about the money. Yeah. He never gave a fuck about that money. You know what wild frame wanted? What? He said, man, put my name in the credits, put me in a music video, and take me to a few of the shows. He didn't care about getting paid. He wanted to let the world know that it who was him. Was. He loved Cause he him. said he didn't get no, he was at the club. And it's, he said they didn't know it was him. He was on the him. song. They did not know it was him. He tried to tell him that's, that's me. He. That shit used to uh, eat that, that ate him up. I know it did. Oh, <laughs> oh that you were mad about and that. Then, everybody thought that was me on the hook. They yeah. thought you were saying, "My your boy stay free." They thought it was you. Mm -hmm. Say, bro, why Frank was so fucked up about that shit? <laughs> I ain't saying it on my ear. He wanted he recognition. Said, he, he said he never performed that song with y'all one time. He did one time. He said he no, didn't get to do it. He, 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 he said he didn't get to do it. He did three times. He didn't get to do it on a big stage. Oh, it was on the spot. Oh, you know, he counted that. Trail, trail, trail the bullshit nigga. <laughs> trail, trail knew what he was doing. They did on the video. They put, they that nigga, put him to the side, they bro. They put that nigga in the business. No, like when it first come on, he doesn't say, when they say, your boy stay fresh. You don't see him. You don't see him. Hey, bro. And when they come on and say, call me Mr. Hit that, that's when you see him. That nigga in the back. That nigga in the back yeah, standing over. He said, you can't tell that's me singing, man. That nigga look like an extra. <laughs> you see, you that's so wrong. <laughs> that was so Whose wrong. Whose idea was it to I put him to the side? Who call organized call that? Hey look, hey, look, because he did bad business. Because he didn't stay true to his word. Because now but it ain't our fault that Trey didn't pay him. But the catch is, since he acted like a bitch when it came to the deal, they treated him like a bitch when it came to the video and the recognition on his name. Because the kid chill, bro, he had more songs that we want to do. He was so fucked about this one song. He wouldn't do it. He didn't allow himself to make more. He was going, bro, we was going to make this nigga the Nate Dog of Dallas. Could nobody touch this nigga voice, fool. No, no, no. That nigga sung on here. When that nigga brought it on here, I knew. I said, boy, this nigga talented. Hey, listen, bro. He supposed to have been a Nate Dog of Dallas, and this was his introduction. This goofy ass nigga was so fucked up and couldn't see the future, bro. And and I don't want to say goofy because at the end of the day, I'd be pissed off too if that was me. I I can't lie. Yeah. Because you got to. What think, did he ever come talk to you about and be like, man? I talked to him because I, he, it seemed like I'm you a, and him had a relationship. I'm a great where, communicator, bro. What did y'all talk about? How did you? We what talked did you, about. He, tried to, he was like, man, y'all gotta look, give my credit. I I told him I said, bro, they did you wrong, fool, because I didn't know. I'm thinking he got paid. That's why I'm like, bro, why you acting like that, my nigga? We paid you, but nobody paid me. <gasps> What? Nobody paid. Because bro, he didn't. He didn't want. He wanted, bro, man, bro. He didn't want nothing. He just wanted y'all to and give him his recognition. And on top of that, fool, it was my decision to put the nigga on the song. Fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. He so, said he brought. He came to meet you. I think he said somewhere. Man, we we met. I, man, this nigga. And had, when he met you, you say, yeah, yeah, like, bro. It, it got to be his voice. If if y'all gonna make a song about me, it got to be with him. That, that's what I want. But when the video come on, man, and you, yeah, you, you I'm going to tell you something. You had that red streak in your hair, right? The blonde. And, uh, that, that blonde streak. Bro. And you come up out that damn convertible. Nobody thought about no damn wide frame, bro. Hey, but the kids, and, and nigga was thinking about Mr. Hit that hoe. You was coming up out that hoe. You were acting a damn fool. Hey, man, R.P. my nigga who walked That was my nigga Vic. <laughs> so I'm saying, big up so You come up out that hoe, man. Everybody in East Dallas. No, but saying, that chorus so, made it to me. That's the only matter, part that I knew. Just, no, I knew when that that's nigga come up out that damn convertible. And, and, and that's when I, I, I didn't so think look, about him no more. So look, I was like, he focused me on the it, fact that I'm looking at him. Yeah, see, but the yeah, kids all right, and, and I'm supposed to be in the flavor flavor of the group. Okay. But the kid cheers. See, that was the issue. Trailer. Well, it wasn't Rick, it was Trail. It was two reasons. Trail, first off, Rick and Trail was best friends. Yeah. It's three of us now. Rick liked it. my personality. A little, I'm different. I'm loud. I'm funny. I ain't too much. And I, I don't care. Like, I don't care about a lot of stuff. Like, my life is... Really after, easy after we go perform in front of 5,000 people, I'm going to the YMCA to go work on Monday morning. Wow. So I was a regular nigga. Like, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. had a good balance. So it was so it was like the teenagers, they used to just love the fact that it was like, man, we got the liveest nigga in the city and he our summer camp leader. Like, he could be anywhere. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that's just the shit I like to do because at the end of the day, you got to do shit that's, that you love to do. Like, I love the music shit. I always want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Fucking watching Martin Vernell Hill, that that episode that changed my life. That, that changed my life. Oh. Now nah, some niggas say that's no, it I knew at that moment that I'm going to be on the radio. And that's why I love the power of attraction. Like I knew it. Like, hey bro, I, that's gonna be me. So you know what I'm saying? Like when I I knew that. So now growing up, 
shit, I got cool. I got cool with Rick. He didn't like that. It kind of he felt like he lost his best friend because yeah. now me and Rick is H yeah. Boom Coon. So shit, he lost his best friend. Shit, we doing shows. Everybody like the little dancing nigga over the music. Let me ask this though: when 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 the video comes out, wireframe set to the side like that. Did they do any more scenes? Because you know, did he? Did Man, he have scenes when he started lie, bro, it, or, no. did, or he was just see the catch we, is wireframe fucked up the whole song. Whether he don't know this though, because at that time it was all the way turned up, and Mister hit that. Both of us were signing in the scope. They went with goddamn me all the way turned up. They said all the, the way, way turned. turned they up. had drama on that song because of Roscoe and Travis Porter. Okay. So boom, they was finna go with the hit that to put the big push. Then we got drama because of fucking wireframe. <laughs> so they like fuck it, we going with them. The niggas from Atlanta anyway. Fuck it. And that's how it happened. <sighs> and it was up from there. Did did you after that? And I don't and I because I I went back into wireframe, but. Uh, Pauls, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Did you, <laughs> did you basically try to rap after that, or what was your? Because you was dancing, but I at never, some point in I, your mind, you I, gotta lie, say, I never want to rap. Well, what was you your, just want to dance? I, I, no, the catch is you was I, a dancing fool. I, I, I didn't expect the dancing shit to to become so iconic and legendary. Right? Who I was just having fun mm -hmm. because at that time it wasn't social media. So the catch is, if you want to be the livest nigga, you got to go on the stage and you got to rock out in front of the livest people. Who going to fuck with you? Who going to be fly to you and fuck with you? So now you got to be fly and go hard. So now even if your nigga could go hard, you looked at Dusty. So you can't fuck with me. So that's why a nigga name was so iconic. Because we were putting that shit on and we was rocking out. And the hoes want to fuck us and the niggas want to be us. Literally, that's why niggas was stealing our moves and shit. So niggas want to be us, hoes want to fuck us. There's no bigger start than that. So you ne you didn't want to rap? No, because I knew the, the life expansion of being a rapper was a lot. Matter of fact, shout out to Young Drop. We did the, uh, uh, not to hit him with the flex. Hit him, uh, was it the, nah, I wouldn't, he was hit him with the flex. You know, he, he, he was a part of the uh, party boys. So when they did that video shoot, we did it in, in South Dallas at the, one of the little Kappa houses. Mm -hmm. It was a little white mansion that, that's on Malcolm X. And goddamn me, I walked in that bitch. I still remember what I had on. I had on like Lacoste, like all Lacoste on. And that nigga looked at me with the gold street. He said, man, who the fuck is that? That nigga look like a star. But remind you, all the rappers is in here. Like all the who's who the. So Jock Senior. Jock was like, bro, who is that? That nigga, nigga look like a star. And then I, bro, who the fuck is that little nigga, bro? You know what I'm saying? And he, bro, so I was like, damn, like, what the fuck, the nigga talk? So boom, I started dancing, I did my little part. He was like, nah, that nigga's a star. That nigga pulled me to the side, like, hey, bro, like, you rap? I was like, nah, you like, hey, nah, just be, be a, like, be a personality. Like, be a personality, they so last he gave long. You the, he gave because you the at that deal, time, uh, Flavor Flav was, he was doing, doing his thing. he was doing a little uh, Flavor Love shit. Mm -hmm. And the catch is, Flav wasn't a rapper. He was more so of a hype man personality. personality. So he was like, push the personality. Vice versa, at that time, Bebe, I'm getting cool with Bebe. You know what I'm saying? Bebe was telling me, like, hey, bro, you need to pick up a mic for you funny. So this is like 2011. Wow. We in Shreveport, and I'm like, all right, all right, cool, whatever. Like, I'm not thinking nothing of it, because, nigga, I literally make money dancing. Why the fuck am I going to pick up a mic? He was like, bro, once they get your personality for you, got a personality. So, you know what I'm saying? Big ups to Bebe for that because he didn't have to do that. Not he had to give me that Shout game. Out Everybody saw that in you and you didn't even see the I didn't. Yet. And then, and then she flash forward, come back home after I go eat with Bebe and them in Shreveport on some. We just had a show out there in Shreveport. Goddamn me, uh, Tam and, uh, like the whole little Arlington 817 pool, Gip and all them, the promoters mm -hmm. in Fort Worth. They had a club called The Wrench. DJ Q was the DJ. Q was like, hey, fool, here, get the mic, fool. Talk. Just say something. It's MC. I was like, what nigga? Remind you, I just got through dancing so the crowd. I'm chilling. I'm finna, now I'm finna go pull me some pull me some girls and shit. I'm finna go turn up now. I'm not idea my hard work. Three, four minutes of sweating. I ain't gotta do shit now. So he was like, bro, get the mic. I wind up getting the mic that night and that started the whole And that's the first time you MC. First time I MC. Cause of Q. Wow, that's hard, man. Yeah. Um <clears throat> you think, do you agree? 
I got to go there with you. With uh, Rainwater had a top, and, and he'd be on here. He had a, a, a fall <laughs> off list. I had a fall off list. I ain't gonna lie for you. I need to put a picture. Right? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. He be over here a lot, but then I got to put OG Pyru on there too because no, he be on. Sure so, yeah, There's yeah. a few people I bring yeah, back sure. a lot because they have they got this. They, it, they get this hey, pull. Hey, you whether whether people like it or not, they got a love the fact that it's the. It's work ethic too, bro. Yeah, fall off list. Do you agree with uh, the fact that Lil Twist fell off harder than anybody because he acting like Wayne? I don't know because I don't know what 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 Twist got going. That's what I said. I said the same thing. So on the like, show. I don't know because the catch is it's, it's other business and financial uh, decisions that people can make. So because I can say she, I fell out because I ain't out as Where much you as wanted I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? Because the catch is, it's like, she. I understand my worth. Only reason I can't be out as much because I can't charge what these niggas is charging. I got to up myself. I got to make myself exclusive. Why? Because when you do go to my event, it's like, that's a different experience. So, but the catch is, is that falling off or is that you bettering your status? That's real. Because at some point, you can't keep doing the same prices like Rain can't be Rain if he still charges the same shit he was charging five years ago. That's real. But the catch is, you sometimes you gotta go into Batman mode to 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 goddamn come out flying with your wings. No, that's real. You know what I'm saying? So, so she. Well, so do you feel like 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 when it come down to the artists that you see that kind of disintegrate in the Dallas market? I think it working like like with Yellow. Like a lot of people say Yellow fell off. I don't think Yellow fell off. It's been a few people when that meeting was called. You heard a lot of people come out and say, because "Why they, would he put a meeting together they, like they that?" Because at the end of the day, it make it look like he let's coming go, back. Let's, let's go like this, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm a, I'm a big advocate for for all the guys who in a, who was in the the big four. And if y'all don't know who the big four is, 2015, it was Yellow Beezy, Mo3, Trap Boy, and Maserati A. That was the big four. You know what I'm saying? And I was, at that time, NWA came out. So it was straight out of Dallas. We was the four, four the four D, the four artists, and I was the, the Dre. Because I knew what was going on. Everybody around the Ticketmaster, Block the uh, Block, the block uh, Goddamn me, uh, I'm missing some names. I apologize if I don't say your name. I love to shout people out because they love that shit. Uh, goddamn me, uh, he uh, the mixtape DJ. Goddamn me, bro, I can't real uh, uh, DJ real. So they was behind the scenes, and we was gonna be the five guys. Whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, dog. Those artists is together, like even though that's nasty, it's the older culture. It's the more seasoned culture. Bro, Yella had to do what he had to do as far as making it known because Yella didn't have a voice with social media. He had to sit down with people. So he never did interact with social media. He ne but the catch is, when you... Well, in Dallas. This is... All right, boom, I'm finna say this. I don't know how this gonna go, but when you're dealing with street shit and people run to the internet, what do they call it? If I'm in the middle of street shit and I go to the internet, Snitching, isn't it? goofy. It's called whatever vocabulary you want to use. I ain't seen y'all saying it, right? Mm -hmm. When Yellow was going through his his shit, did he ever go to the internet? No, not about the situation. He got asked about it on Breakfast Club and other places that he went. Did uh, he ever talk about it? No. So take Yellow out the picture. A nigga in some street shit and he never talk about it on the internet and you know he in some street shit. He didn't got popped before anything. What would you consider him? It'll, it'll be like he's... A, what would you consider him, E? Just a, a, a real cat. A, a cat that... that a real nigga. Business. Yeah. Why Yellow not, not categorize as a real nigga in a, in, a, in a culture of Dallas, Texas? That's all I'm going to say. Why do we not look at Yellow Beezy as a certified real nigga? Because when he was going through his shit, he never cried about it. He never bitched about it. He never went to the internet about it. And the catch is, we look at him as he done fell off. He a hoe ass nigga. He soft. He light skinned. That sound like y'all hate that man. Wow. Yeah. So but you, if, if it's, it's not Yellow Bees, if it's any other nigga in the streets and he do what Yellow did, he never spoke on it. He never went to the podcast and gossip about it. He will be classified 
Bobby Smarter, a real nigga. But didn't he? I, I think don't he get the love like when he go out and do shows or if he show he up do. people but people I'm talking, show up for I'm talking about the internet the internet the internet because the catch but, is but how can you expect the internet to to show you love when you don't up, they, when they you don't up. really show up to the internet to even you not you don't have a character in it so he don't My really cat, he shouldn't even cat, care he shouldn't even care about what care. the internet thing this, this is not, I don't think he does no this is not him I'm just asking because yeah. this, this is a real debate. Yeah. Because our jobs is to look at every aspect. Yeah. And I love, man, I, man, I don't even got to say I love three. Niggas know what it is. I don't never got, and niggas know I never picked a side. I supposed to have been three DJ. I could have been, I could have got rich. I could have really got rich with three. And you know what? I said, hey, man, you know what, bro? I'm cool with everybody. I can't do it. And you know what I'm saying? Me and three had words. Me and Ray had words about it. But at the end of the day, Hey, my nigga, that was my morals and my principles that I stood on because I knew coming in, everybody was cool and I'm going to push it to the element of it. So when shit go left on this side, I got to sit there and just hold water. And when shit go left on this side, I got to sit there and hold water. You know how niggas say they can't play the fence? You only can play the fence when you know you true to the fence. Is there anything you feel like you left out when you was dealing with Mo3 that maybe could have helped defuse the situation at all? Nah, it ain't nothing. I mean, I mean, you did everything in your possible power. If you look back at the everybody, situation, everybody I'm did. not talking about everybody. I'm talking about you. Talking about for shit show. Like you see what I'm saying? For shit show. But the catch is one thing about it, bro. I, I, I do gotta under. I gotta understand and respect. My three was a real nigga. Did you see? So, uh, no, good, did you see the Goody Mob uh, interview where he spoke on the Dallas? Uh, before we even get to that, Mo3 was a real nigga. His principles, what he stood on, he stood on those like like a man. I can't be mad at a man standing on what he believe in. I can't be mad at Trap for standing on what he believe in. I can't be mad at Yellow for... These niggas was at my house, bro. Me and Trap, we talked about this shit while playing Madden at my house. Me and Three at my house talked about it while we playing Connect Four wow. and shooting jumpers in, uh, on my kids look Fisher Price gold. Mm. We had those talks and the catch is, is, is it was beyond it was beyond repair. Terrible. Yeah, I hear you. But the catch is we had those man to man talks and I know nigga I was Miss Melvin and Kid talking. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like nigga when I was talking to Trap them it was real we was we was having real solid conversation. Like, bro, like they never looked at me different because they all they could do was respect me more because they were like, damn, this whole ass nigga, he ain't even picking no sides. And they, they willing to, I can make money with them or I can make one. I was like, I ain't making money with nobody. I go broke. I pick. I feel like y'all are the future and we the future can't grow without all of y'all. I still feel that way to this day. I still, I play a three song, a yellow song, a trap song. I stand on the wall for motherfucking three. I stand on the wall for yellow. I stand on the wall for trap. But that's so the way when, it should be. When he had when he had that meeting, only thing I feel like yellow should have did more, he should have, he got to open up to the people, bro. But maybe that's not his character. And, and the catch is, and if it's not his character, you, one, but one thing about it, the people who love him, love him. Yeah. The people who don't love them, y'all didn't love them no way. Yeah, yeah. So I can't control the motherfuckers that never loved me to begin with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's just his character. And, and I think if he just be true to himself, he'll be great. You know, I respect his music. Like I always tell people, I, I like his music. music before. Because he, 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 he was melodic before this shit was cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. This I, I, I honestly think it's hard to battle somebody who has passed on and can't defend themselves and still making great music because I done heard the new Mo3 album it's great music Yellow got great music but people are naturally going to pick a side people are not just going to listen to both they're going to naturally pick a side and one thing about Yellow new music is fire I'm talking about super dumb features on that bitch good music and, 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 and he leading the song he carrying the load so I'm like yeah but I heard three shit and that motherfucker still carrying the load. So it's like the culture for Dallas is so great. That's why motherfuckers is steady chiming in to us. That shit was fucking 2021. Mm -hmm. And people still talking about it 2024. Going back to it, though, uh, when when I had Gip on here, he said that somebody should have did that because they should have told him it was going to mess the money up. 
It was gonna mess the bag. They up. tried to. The he, the OGs of the city. They tried to. Nigga, I'm talking about the OGs of the state. Nigga, Jay Prince tried no, to. No, we heard him. about the Jay Prince. No, I'm talking sure. about. I'm talking about everybody tried to. But the catch is one thing about it. Dallas don't got no structure. Nigga, we the wild wild west. Nigga, I'm getting money. You getting money. Nigga, you want to go to war? Oh, you you don't like what I'm doing? Nigga, fuck you. Stay on that side if you don't like what I'm doing. So do you think there should be more structure in the it, way it has it's to, people like you that got to be that, that deciding factor at some point? At, at some point, You've yep. been in Dallas all this time. You got young niggas out here that's coming up. You, I don't worry about the old niggas. I'm talking about the you, young these your peers. Not the young these, I'm talking about the niggas under you. Young niggas. There has to be some point where the old the older cats step up and say, you know what, man, let me holler at that youngster because he doing what I did. I ain't going to lie, though, but that's what, you see, that's what you see with the rise of the new Dallas. So you dealing with a lot saying, of them. And, and a lot of people. Let me. Now I'm finna give y'all some Dallas history. This the second coming of New Dallas. The first wave of New Dallas was the uh, of uh, or uh, uh, goddamn me, Free Loso. Loso started the first wave of the New Dallas movement. If you go click the New Dallas movement hashtag, you will see they started this shit back in like 2017, 18, 19, where they were pushing the New Dallas wave. You know what I'm saying? It's the second coming of the new Dallas. Who do you think gonna be that 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 peak of the? Is it is it is it zillionaire dough? Is it uh, Montana's? Uh, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna give you. Is a, it? I'm gonna give is, you. Who's the pillar? I'm gonna give you. The, I'm gonna give you the perfect breakdown of how I see the new Dallas based off of the history of the old Dallas. Montana 700 reminds me of what Big Chief was doing. Okay. Smooth voice. Cool, fly, dark skin nigga. Know what I'm saying? The hoes love him. He can pop it, and 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 Montana can really rap. Seven hundred, trap boy, big nigga on the block, walk in the room, nigga. Everybody knows. Zena though. Zena. So know what I'm saying? Then you got a uh, a mirror out of East Dallas that's coming up in the ranks. Cool little voice. Know what I'm saying? He 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 kind of giving me that that C Strugs type feel. Know what I'm saying? You got, damn, there's so many of them little niggas, bro. Like that whole little clique. You got, you got M, MB, uh, you got Motion Boy P, you got AK, you got the other little niggas around them. Uh, you got goddamn me, you got big homie uh Keevy, and then you got goddamn me, got uh, Kevin got bands. It's just, it's a lot of. But then, and where do you put uh, hood them that's with uh, with Big X? You got you got hood them coming. You know what I'm saying? You got Rosama and Hood that's really. Uh, but and he, I and and I love I, I love Rosama. I love Hood. I just want Hood to goddamn me give us a song with a hook and keep giving us that because we know you can flow. We know we know you can flow. So it's just a process of everybody coming together and goddamn me making the music because one thing about it right now. We got good music because we forcing it on them, but we don't got undeniable music. Big X, he he holds his own. Any city I go to, I go everywhere. Um, everywhere I go, they recognize him. Um, does he keep that momentum? Um, Fucking you know, right. Um, Fucking and, and right. Does, and does he get that big song? Fucking right. X got it. He didn't got multiple. I think we as a city dropped the ball on the Texas record. You know what I'm saying? As far as like the the the... The like the radios and the like I think the radio we dropped the ball on the power of the Texas radio uh, Texas record because we didn't understand what was coming until it came. And but but the catch is we ain't dropping the ball on nothing else because we 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 moving a the mm hmm record we moving a whip it record with them so it's like we 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 understand that he we have a star. In Dallas, Texas, by the name of Big X, it's nobody bigger than X. What do you think when you see the road? Unless you want to say what, what, Bats. what do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fobats for sure. And I'm gonna go back to Fobats and them. But what do you see about the road and Bumpy Johnson them doing stuff anthems for like like Dallas? It's dope for the culture. You see what I'm saying? It's dope for the culture. Because that's a different branch off when you think about it's it. It's dope for the culture. One thing it about go nowhere. One for thing sure. about the road. I, mean, it's I, love, be I love the way he embrace the big homie. You know what I'm saying? I was one of the, the, the creators of the whole culture and the way he carried himself. He don't hate on them. He, he's working with everybody. He do a lot of behind the, behind the scenes work. He just with, came out to, who's that, Nicki Minaj? Nicki Minaj. He, he, he is, he's the pinnacle of Dallas. Think about it. Nicki Minaj invited Him the road. B. King. Yellow. B. King. Yellow Beezy. 
And Big King was Houston. He, yeah, he Houston. But in Dallas, yeah. it was the road, yellow. Mm -hmm. And the other person that'll normally come out is Big Tug. Yeah, right. Big Tug, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So the, those three are like our legendary pinnacle points in Dallas. Undeniable. And then now you have Big X for sure. That's going to be a part of that, that culture moving forward. If, you know what I'm saying, shit don't continue. Even if he don't do nothing else right now, Big X will be a pinnacle point in Dallas history. Wow. He has, yeah. he has placed his stamp in our culture. Mm. Period. Will Bumpy Johnson be able to go anywhere? A lot of people say, uh, I had a Trill Talk No Pill Talk on here, and he says that Rainwater is the reason Bumpy Johnson can't get over the hump. I don't believe that. I believe probably. And what happened to Dun Dun? What happened to all these guys? Uh, number seven. What life, happened? Life. Life keep lifing? Life, life. You know what I'm saying? I, I, remember, I remember, that's crazy, Miss Jamaica. I was in Jamaica. <laughs> I, I, I was in Jamaica, and I had a, I'm talking about, I was on vacation. I remember my girl saying, boy, get out that goddamn phone. On the phone with Rain and uh, Dun Dun when they, were finna, when they were finna sign. And I was like, hey, my boy, this is the beginning steps of it. You got to save your money. You got to be smart. You got to be mindful. You can't let nobody trick you out mm. the streets. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. But the catch is, it's hard to say. It's easy to say that. It's hard to be done. And it's hard to be done. Wow. When you don't got somebody that you can constantly call and get because Rain is not the advice giver. He's the businessman. You need to do this, 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 this. You still need somebody that advises you on mentor mentorship. Like a counselor. You gotta have a counselor and you gotta trust somebody ain't in your goddamn me blind eye. They on your they in your corner and they can be your passenger to help you direct. I'm driving, but you got the map and I trust you with the map. Rain is a manager, he not the map giver. Mm-hmm. Rain ain't no he nigga. I'm gonna help you get this money. I'm gonna show you how to get this money, and I'm gone to the next. I'm not finna hold your fucking hand. But niggas want their hand held. I'm not saying done done them. I'm just saying niggas in the rap game. They want their hand held when they get lost. But then you don't want to pay because it's a fee. You want mm. your hand held. You try, I got to charge you a babysitting fee. That's real. Because the catch is, as long as I hold your hand, I can't get my next wave of finances. Wow. Um, why is it that when H-Town artists get on and they still to this day they dip into Dallas and, and, and you know we show them so much love um, why don't it happen the other way H-Town so Dallas people love no meaning meaning when they go down there do they do they go do shows down there is, is they, you know I'm, what I'm saying I only can speak for give me. me give me I know they show me love I ain't tripping on I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about artist wise I'm, I, as an artist we made so much money in Houston. We bought an apartment in Houston. We stayed on West Hama and motherfucking uh, the freeway. That was when you, when Mr. Hit That was, Man, was booming. We, we, we used to stay with a lady named Miss Chandra, our manager at the time. This is, this is all facts. And, and at, the biggest niggas was uh, Boom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's still holding okay. it down yeah. out there. And goddamn, he would tell you, we was booked every other week. In H-Town. What? Why come others, can uh, do others figure it out? Do you see that still happening to this day? Be real. I don't think that utilizing Houston, how, de how Houston utilizes Houston, Dallas. That's what I'm saying. That That's what I was getting at. Like, is it, is it that us? Is it Dallas doing that? I'm going to tell you like this, and people don't want to hear this. The reason we got the we got the flood Houston is solely because we had one nigga out there running around putting shit together. Okay. Who was that one nigga? Right. You name me another nigga that was out there running around. See, see that's why I just said to a nigga the other day. He was running around because he loved pussy. <laughs> and that was what was driving him to catch his. You can't get pussy if you don't get no money. So it was a two for one for him. I was with him. So I'm just saying. So in that run, that's how that shit came about. That's how, how so many Dallas niggas got the run, rip and run through Houston. Because at that time, it was so many different small clubs that we could attack for 15, 2000. But now, niggas want so much money, you can't attack it like that. But now you lose the groundwork. Now you now you go in escalator mode and not the steps. See, we got to go through the steps. Do you think Rainwater was a big part of uh, the boogie movement like that? Man, fucking right, bro. So you give him his credit? Yeah, man. I mean, but if, if a nigga don't give him his credit, they're a liar. Oh, they a hater. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And because the catch is, we don't get booked. And he was a bullshit nigga. 
It's a bullshit nigga. For real nigga, bullshit nigga. That's my dog. He's a bullshit nigga. And I call him on all the time. I love him. Bullshit nigga, though. He do bullshit shit. But the catch is, his response is, they did bullshit to me first. And they didn't think I was going to know. So I can't, get a mad, I can't get mad on a man playing the situation at hand. Because the game of life is not chess. Because chess is fair. Everybody get the same amount of pieces. Everybody can move the same apparent way. It's just how you move. That's not life, my nigga. That's strategy. That means that, nigga, did you, did you move your neck or did you move your queen? Did you use your pawns or did you use your motherfucking me, uh, bishop? That's, that's chess. That's strategy. Nigga, in this game, we got niggas chuckles. What you mean? Hit that, it's chuckles. Because the catch is, nigga, once I lose my piece, I can't get them back. Chess, you get your pieces back. If niggas know about chess, yeah. you can get your pieces back. Checkers, nigga, once they gone, it's gone. So now if I jump three, four of your niggas, now you got to adjust with what you got, and it is what it is, and the moves is simple. One, two, three. The catch is, didn't nobody make the moves to go one, two, three, but that nigga. Wow. You got to wow. think about it, nigga. This nigga didn't got, this nigga didn't got cases. This nigga didn't got shot. They could have been killed doing this shit. Yeah. He deserved everything he got. No matter how he went about it. Now, my morals might not do the same shit he did, but the catch is, I don't know what's in his life to make his morals the way they is. I don't know what trauma he had to, for him to be like that. And nigga, I don't know what trauma you got to make you like that. That's it. You went to jail. You know what I'm saying? So you have to learn certain shit that I couldn't even fathom. So I can't expect me to walk in your shoes. I can only try to understand and comprehend and adjust accordingly. A lot of niggas want to complain and bitch, but ain't nobody adjusting accordingly. You, I got five people I'm going to name. Or it could be groups or whatever. When I say them, I want you to tell me what you think about those people as far as when, what comes to mind. Mr. Lucha and Pookie. I love those guys. I love, I love, I'm going to break them down. I love Mr. Pookie because despite whatever he's going through, I don't know if he's going through something or not. He's always popping outside. He's always showing love. And if you ever interview him, ask him how he that feel about him. I stop the club and go through a seven, eight song Pookie mix because that's what I grew up. I used to ride the five five four on Lit Better before they put the train tracks there to get to my grandma's house in Highland Hills, College Park to be exact on Strawberry and Tioga, and listen to that nigga music that I recorded off Greg Street on the radio on my little tape, tape little Walkman. You know what I'm saying? That's showing my age, but damn. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And then Mr. Lucci, what he did. Being a young nigga going to jail, coming back, still staying solid on his morals and values, the way he carry himself, even to this day. And you can't do nothing but respect him. And he did something for the culture Dallas never seen. He made a movie, The Triple D. Man, Fat Pimp. Fat Pimp, a legend. Great father. Still working. He's iconic. And he don't get the credit that he deserved with the power of his records. Like on those on that big stage. Like they don't understand how big Rack Daddy was, it'll, it'll make an arena move. You know what I'm saying? But great dude, man. And he, and he business oriented. He got a lot of shit going on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know. And I done seen my nigga get kicked out a few baseball games. <laughs> With did. the kids. Yeah, that, nigga, that nigga rowdy father like me, but he, he don't know how to control himself. <laughs> DOC. I don't know, bro. You never met DOC? Never met him. In your life? Never. Wow. That's crazy. I only, I only know about the the movie and what I didn't read and the iconicness of his his penmanship. And he got a baby by Eric Badu. I didn't know that neither. You got a daughter by her. The uh, the, the daughter daughter. Yeah, that's his daughter. That's his daughter. For real? Yeah. Didn't know. You that. didn't even know that. I seen Puma at the Eric Badu show. <laughs> that's his daughter. Man, Eric Badu got down, seen me in the crowd, and waved at me before I got it on camera. Bro, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You did not know that was his daughter. No, man, not know that, man. But I understand that nigga a goat, <laughs> boy. Cause that's 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 that is that is top tier. Yeah, that yeah. is that's that's the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> that, man, say, just, to, <laughs> didn't even just know. To say you didn't got to goddamn me tamper with anything of that nature is immaculate. Kudos to that man. <laughs> Yeah, that, that gave him a, a whole nother perspective. What? <laughs> Undeniable. I mean, Jamaica, you know you get like skin beautiful queen, but it's, it's something about a thick, dark skin woman, dog. I'm That's talking about crazy. that nigga is a man. I need to shake that nigga's hand. 
Hey, make that happen, dog. I got you. I talk to my guy. I don't to talk to That's him. my guy. Hey, boy, you a bad motherfucker, <laughs> boy. I'm talking about... Yeah, man, and he ain't, he ain't get word too. He just nah, kept chilling. Man, nigga, <laughs> nigga. why the fuck we don't talk when about that? When I interviewed him, he said he, he had seen her walking down uh, uh, Lamar. I'm like, what? He like, yeah, that's when I hollered back out the young. second time. No, nah, when he hollered back out after he had the yeah. maid and came back home, he seen her walking on Lamar. She was and young, did still. She was like twenty. I don't know, but I'm thinking, what the hell was there? But that, she was still had the grab. She still had. To, she do that. Now she really liked that, and that's hard. That's what I loved about when he said, "I'm like, what?" Nah, I, like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't ran. It, I didn't ran into Andre three thousand at least four times in Dallas, just on some rando shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I was just so appreciative of his presence. I I didn't want to ask for a picture. I was just like, damn, bro, that's Andre, bro. Like this Tim, right? It's Andre, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I was Did also, you talk to him? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I do respect. He 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 not one of those guys that uh, right right right. So yeah. it's like man, just hey, appreciate the man's presence. Keep it moving. I gotta ask you about. Uh, I got more. Uh, baby, gotta ask you about baby. He's, what what comes to mind when you when you when I say baby? He's a Hollywood pi- baby. He's the pioneer of room shifting. That's Meaning. Right. Like undeniably, can't nobody compare to the amount of rooms he didn't shifted in his lifetime, and I didn't been present to to see it on more than one occasion. And I love to be a part of that that small group of people that can be a room shifter. Like, know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't know what a room shifter is, meaning if he gets on that mic. The room will erupt, and I don't know if y'all have never been. I got an ability to do that. I'm blessed, like you know what I'm saying. So it's people. Some people can try to mimic that shit, but it's in you. Mm. Like mm. I'm talking about whether I'm talking about whether we at an elementary school on career day, to we in front of twenty thousand people at a festival or whatever, or we at a club with a thousand people. He a room shifter, dog, and the catch is. He he has a major part in the Dallas Boogie movement too. You know what I'm saying? For for him to carry two cities on his back, it's dope as shit. Mm. Because that's hard. Because you got to think about it. As long as he doing shit for Dallas, Louisiana people gonna hate him. As long as he doing shit for Louisiana, people in Dallas gonna hate him. You know what I'm saying? I'm gifted with ability to understand that niggas are, with me being in a position I'm in, niggas are try to goddamn me put me against him or someone of his magnitude because. People love the underdog mm. until you're the big dog, and then when you're the big dog, they don't want to fuck with you no more because they feel like they can't reciprocate the benefits of life from what you got going on. So to know that and understand the position big dog in, shit, dog, and on the radio, dog, he, he's he's undeniable, my nigga. Wow. Man, it's just something you never would think that you guys have been working together all that long, that many years like you yeah. guys have. And see, I don't get the I don't get an opportunity to 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 actually like work with them, but to be a fly on the room on the little days that I do, like probably like five to ten times a year, I can catch them in action. It's like you just gotta appreciate greatness because you know he's gonna go down in the book of like Radio Hall of Fame at some point. I, I just want to tell you, you, you on during that interview, you was ridiculously loud, and yeah, you was sure. really you you was charging everybody up about different things. You was stopping, you was controlling the room when it came down to certain things about yeah. Dallas. You could tell you very passionate about it. Sure. Look, shout out to Terry I, Blue. I, I, Terry I tried loud. to Terry tried to say something. Did he, you, you're not originally from Dallas. You're not from Dallas. You know, yeah, he know he from New Orleans, nigga. But the way you were handling everything, it's just who you are. But you, nigga, you was, was a little a loud. Thing? No, I think people, I need, to, people need to see I this lie. nigga in that element because he I, cut, he Dallas. He he, he holding that shit as hard as he can. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, keep. I'm gonna keep it real with you, bro. Like I've been wanting to do a podcast. <laughs> For so long, right? Because I started with podcast. Scrap I remember that. I, told, I messaged you about uh, that all the time. I uh, damn R. P. Dip. Goddamn glam, glam. Still, she still doing her, her thing. And Frank, my boy, just came home. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? After we did that, and then it, it, it catapulted me to get on the actual the radio, radio station that I want to be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, damn. I was like, man, I can leave it alone. But now I'm, I'm like, nah. 
Cause after that feedback from that interview, dog, like people was like, "Damn, ain't that you?" But like, cause people don't see me, they only see me DJ and they don't see my persona. Yeah. But the catch is, like, I be th I be telling people like, "Do y'all understand? Like, my persona is what then carried me when that song died out. My yeah. persona what kept, you know what I'm saying? The, the motion going with Johnny Down D dropping a new." Hit, hitting record. Shout out to saying? Johnny Damn D. We had him on the show about a year or so ago, and Man. I did not see him at that time. He was just hey, that's he crazy. hadn't came back yet. Hey, he Lee, was just, but he was working. He hey, was Lee, hey, you see how you said you didn't see it? I didn't see it. I already knew what was going on. Really? What you supposed to? You over there with these niggas, ain't you? I, and to catch it, 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 it wasn't even that. It's just I got to keep my earth. I know. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example. Everybody screaming. Who the hottest out of Dallas right now coming up? Four bats. No, 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 not four bats. You no, know I'm saying that's global. In Dallas, who? The X. No, but he's already he already signed. Who's the new niggas that ain't signed? Zillionaire Doe and, and and Montana Seven Hundred. And who else? Just give me like four or five of them. Kev got bands. Okay. Is another one they mention all the time. Who else? Who else? Uh, give me who, who you thinking? Am I missing somebody? Everybody you just named, right? Yeah. That's who I brought to my birthday party last June. So you already knew. I already knew what was going on. I was ahead of the curve. I've been knowing it. And them, them boys, like I say, I've been playing them for a year. I already knew it's going to take a year for you, for the world <coughs> to catch up. Mm. Now some new niggas that's coming out. Yeah. And you got OGs coming out. You got Twisted Black. You know what I'm saying? You got Twisted Black that dropped the record. Man, Twisted Black. Man. And, and think about Killer Mike. I always talk about it. Killer Mike showed you that hey, listen, you can bro. get a Grammy hey, and listen. rap at 40 some, hey, 50 some years hey, old, Hey, listen, man. bro. Twisted Black, I'm a Dallas nigga. He's from Fort Worth. For sure. DF Dub Connected. He's one of those guys that we're going to have to just sit back and, and appreciate the real niggerness of him. His storytelling ability, his ability to be a lyricist, and the catch is, I don't think the DF Dub culture is showing him enough love by being a real nigga, going to jail, not snitching, standing on his morals, coming home, and still moving in the ability of a big homie and be a presence like he is. Oh, he, he We're not showing him the, the 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 amount of effort that he needs. Like, I hope you put this clip out. No, no, no. So, he's, he's, so the he's culture what, can understand. He spoke on it in here. So I know it, it, it's a thing where... Fuck him speaking on it, E. I'm talking about us as a culture having certified real gangsters because that's what y'all want to goddamn me. Glorify. You want to glorify this. We have a certified real gangster who stood on gangster principles, got shot in the fucking face, lived to tell about it, still can be lyrical, out here, ain't trying to be no young nigga dressed like a young nigga for the new hoes, being OG, giving OG game, connecting with the murder game PBs by re reintroducing the world. Yeah. Why are we not showing that man the credit that he deserves? I think he just got to keep working. I tell him that all the time. As he continue to work, he can't. He won't be denied. But it, it, that work, once that work keep coming, as he keep putting that music out, Facts. you gonna feel him. But the main thing is he has to stay consistent. Straight period. Up. And as he do that, because he can rap, ain't nobody, and he telling his story. Yo. And I think that that's what gotta, sets him a, apart. He got an undeniable story. Dog. And he gonna keep rapping. And I know within a year story, from now, bro. like you seen that whole thing with a year from him, because he was gone 17 years, he gonna have to keep rapping, bro. And it's it's a lot of new niggas that 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 we ain't speaking on. Like I ain't gonna lie, we ain't. We ain't I learned not to shout out so many niggas because they 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 getting they they getting their head too quick. But it's a lot of niggas that shit. What a camera! Y'all know who y'all are. I'm paying attention. I'm watching. I understand. I just want to see if y'all gonna stay consistent. Where people can actually goddamn. Understand what, what you think about Gunna Measy? We didn't say nothing about him. He just brought Jim I'm, Jones down here. I'm I'm proud of Gunna Measy. We, we me and Gunna Measy had to sit down and it was heated. I, I, <laughs> I, it I was, love it. <laughs> it was heated. Like like the the owner of the little establishment was like, "Is everything okay?" <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, bro, like you know what I'm saying? Gunna don't nobody owe you shit. You gotta work." Wow. You gotta work. That's the bottom line. Don't nobody give a fuck how good you can rap. You gotta get on. You gotta get over the the, the, the stigma of people gonna categorize you in a mo three context because the way you rap, and you you're not gonna like that. But at the end of the day, you really can rap. Like like that nigga can really rap. Like he one of those ones, and he got a good song, 
and he putting on for his little section, East Dallas. I was hurt at him for doing that because I felt like he should have made it a more of a Dallas anthem and then made an East Dallas remix. But I understand the coach and what he represents. That's like me repping for the Grove. I'm always rep my, my I'm repping Dallas, but shit, I'm a 6'5", baby. Grove side, that's in me. He's, you know what I'm saying? Unpleasant growth. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, I'm being over here. I hear this thing going on. I see a uh, show hitting off for real. It's going everywhere. Snoop said, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Everybody talking about it. Everybody posting it. All of these different people getting on these clips now for real. You see people coming into town rocking with him. Yep. Uh, what do you think his deal Big is? Show, and will, that, will he be able to continue that with that Big type show. of success? See, the scary thing about with Show, his song got so big, it went straight to the radio first. Wow. And that nigga doing everything right. That nigga politicking, he networking, he doing all the work, he making good music. I think the world not going to appreciate Show until he dropped this album. And I didn't heard a few of the songs. He got a song on over Twisted Black that I feel like, bro, it's undeniable. It's, it's so, it's so ball status. But when the album dropped, the world gonna know. Because I think, I think his shit, I think his shit, I think he got, lyrically, he one of those ones. Like, lyrically, he one of those ones. I'm wow. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, I can just really be real with you and say, I listen to your ear. When you talking, I listen to you. You my, you my homie. Like, you mm -hmm. always come here as a kid. You've been coming here. So when I'm tapping into the city, I'm tapping in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm Texas. You always you see the medallion. It's small, but it's there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always there. There ain't no big Jerry type nigga, but you're gonna see that Texas right there. Yeah, nigga got a me, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah me I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hear in Nova Scotia, nigga understand. It goes, it's tatted on my chest, even when I get in the hard space. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight Texas nigga, man. Yeah, for sure. So at the end of the day, I, I, I appreciate you so much, man, for what you give to this culture. Sure. I pray that you keep pushing and doing things to pretty much calculate to where these young niggas can have something to look at, like I told you. You ready for the podcast, man? And and we gonna we gonna definitely we going I'm gonna strategize to help with that. I want to be a part of the no, help, for sure. you know, to make sure, sure that this thing don't fall in the crevices because you have so much going. You cutting hair, you doing yeah. all kinds yeah, of stuff. You got her now. You got people doing everything around yeah. you. You you doing everything to help the people around you. And I just want to see you keep growing and going, yeah, man. So well, we're gonna drop. I'm, I'm gonna drop. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Whenever y'all drop this this interview. I'm going to drop the first chit chat we hit that episode one with JT. That's the what City I'm talking Girls. about, baby. That's so, what I'm talking yeah, about, baby. So, I've been yeah. on his ass about it for a yeah, whole yeah, year yeah. and a half, nigga. Yeah, Ever since he came did that first interview, I've been telling him, nigga, yeah, I'm, yeah. we not trying to hear that, bro. And I got I got I got the footage. I'm just I'm just waiting for the right time to drop it. So, it's going to be a great way to pick up. How can people get a hold of you, man? Man, shoot. Uh, got it. You know already it's, you Instagram T H E M R H I T D A T the Mr. Hit that Got a green uh green shirt on. Just tap in with me. <laughs> How did you get that page back? Like, huh? How did you on. get that page back? No cap, this crazy, right? So my old lady, she I don't know what the fuck she did. She went and got on Google because I had started a new page. Right, and you lost that yeah, page. And I was like, damn, this shit gone, you know what I'm saying? So she she got on Google. She was like, Well, if you go to Facebook and do this, and if your picture, like so if this is a cheat code for our artists, anybody who don't want to lose their page, you put your face as your default. Put your face as your default because it has face recognition. You go to Facebook, you send them a picture of your ID. They're going to use face recognition from your ID picture to your default picture. If they coincide and you ain't goddamn me violating no nudity, gang, guns, shit like that, they're giving you your page back. Wow. Absolutely wow. free. Wow, that's hard, man. Y'all better, hey, peep game. game. Peep game. So no, so don't, niggas so say. don't put your logo on there. Put your fucking face. Whoever's the owner of it, even if you got to put your face and the logo is on the T-shirt because it's your face. It's the face recognition because they want, they want gonna you got to send them a written letter and you got to take a picture of your ID fun back. Facebook support, boom, you'll get that bitch back. Link your Instagram with your hey, Facebook. Facebook. Wow. Hey, man, listen, man. Thank you, Mr. Hit That. We love you, as you already know, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys check out this next clip. It's going to be Mr. Hit That going hard in the paint. Everything yeah. he talked about on Boss Talk 101, yeah. man. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.